does God exist? And if there is a God, should we believe in him merely because the scriptures and saints say so? Or is there any proof of his existence? This question has been asked innumerable times in history. It is being discussed today and it shall be debated in future as well. So let us ponder over it. To establish the existence of an entity, there are three kinds of evidence. Pratyaksh Praman, Anuman Praman and Shabd Praman. The first is experiential or perceptional direct evidence. You see something, so you believe it. The second is inferential evidence. You see something and from that you infer another. And the third is testimonial evidence. Somebody who has experienced, you accept his or her authority. Let us see how these three apply to the concept of God. Scientists would say, you show me the proof of God through perceptional evidence. Let me see him. Let me dissect him in the laboratory and then I shall accept his existence. The problem is, that this kind of evidence is very limited. In the present, there are so few things that you can see or perceive. Right now, if I were to go out, I would see no stars. Should I conclude that there are no stars because I cannot see them? Or for example, I have never seen my great-great-grandfather should I conclude I never had a great-great-grandfather just because I have never seen him? The president of a country administers a huge area. If he says, I will only accept what I have seen, how will he be able to administer his country? He needs other kinds of evidence as well. Let us say, that I show you a container of milk and ask you, is there butter in it? It is not reduced fat milk. What will you say? Yes, Swamiji, there is definitely butter in it. Can you see it? <laughs> no. Then how do you know there is butter in it? You will say there is a way of proving it. If I transform the milk into yogurt and then churn the yogurt, I will extract the butter. Right. So there is a way of seeing things, even though they may not be perceptible immediately. Similarly, the mere fact that we cannot see God at present does not prove his non-existence. If you wish to see him, there is a process. Follow the process and you will see him. The process is described. Learn to cleanse the heart. Purify your mind. Now if you are not willing to do the process and you say I cannot see him so there is no God, that is an unrealistic expectation. Do you believe there is a place called Timbuktu? <laughs> yes. Have you ever gone there and seen it? <laughs> no. Then why do you believe? Well, there are books that explain there is a Timbuktu. And people who have been there have come and told me there is such a place. The books could be wrong. The people could be lying. <laughs> That's right. But if you don't believe them, you buy a ticket, take a flight and go and see it for yourself. Similarly, for the existence of God, saints who have seen him have told us. 
the scriptures are telling us if you disbelieve their authority what they tell us to do which is to cleanse the heart you do it at the end of it if you don't see god then say that he is disproved but without putting in the effort we don't have the right to say there is no god only that person can deny the existence of god who is all knowing who knows everything in the universe because if somebody is not all knowing in that case maybe the one thing about the universe that he doesn't know may be god and since nobody is all knowing nobody can establish the non existence of god a higher kind of evidence is anuman praman or inferential evidence what is this from one thing you infer another like for example there is electricity in the wire how do you know can you see it no but there is a light that is burning the fact that the light is burning indicates there is electric energy reaching it through the wire so from the light we infer the existence of electricity in the wire this anuman praman is utilized by our scriptures and saints to establish the existence of god for example jagat guru shankara acharya says yadidam jagat dev gandharva yaksha raksha pitri pishachaadi lakshanam dhruviyat prithibya ditya chandragraha nakshatra vichitram we see this amazingly complex world the fact that this world is so intricately patterned and organized leads us to believe that there must be a creator behind it a great scientist in history was maxwell he was a firm believer in the creator he had a fellow scientist who did not believe in the existence of god he preferred to believe the big bang theory that the world was created by an explosion maxwell to open the eyes of his friend scientist created a model of the solar system and put it into motion in his study room when his friend came and saw that he was amazed he said wow who made this maxwell said nobody made it <laughs> what do you mean nobody made it maxwell said i was working on my study table when there was an explosion when i turned around this had got made the friend said who are you kidding how can such an amazing thing be made by an explosion maxwell retorted my friend it seems implausible to you that a little model of the solar system can be made by a bang and you wish me to believe that the real thing consisting of innumerable such solar systems is made by a bang doesn't it go against common sense it is more plausible to accept the hypothesis that this amazing world must have a creator behind it scientists realize the existence of laws in every little thing physical laws chemical laws mathematical laws and yet they are not willing to accept the existence of the law maker isn't it more common sensical to think that if there are laws there must be a law maker there was once a geography teacher he taught his students look this world was created by itself he later gave them the homework make a map of the world and bring it one of the students was of a philosophic bend of mind and would think a little more deeply 
He filled a paper with scratched lines, threw colors into it and submitted it on the teacher's desk. When the teacher reached the class and saw the homework assignments, he started evaluating them one after the other until he came to that scrap of paper. And seeing that, he became annoyed. Who has submitted this? He shouted. The class was silent. He repeated himself, Tell me who has made this? Again, nobody responded. He blew over in rage. Tell me who made this or I'll punish all of you. The boy who had submitted it stood up. He said, Sir, in my opinion, nobody made it. What do you mean? I mean the paper flew and fell on your desk. The pencils flew and lines got scratched. The colors flew and filled up in the paper. The teacher said, what nonsense are you speaking? Somebody must have definitely made it. And I doubt. It seems like you are the boy who is responsible for this. The student replied, sir. You are not willing to believe that the third class map of the planet Earth can be made by itself. And you wanted us all to believe that the real world is made by itself. Doesn't that also require a creator? So this inferential evidence is utilized by some people to establish the existence of God. They say, the world is so amazing, it must have a creator behind it. And finally, testimonial evidence, Shabda Praman. You accept the authority of somebody who is more knowledgeable and experienced. Now on the spiritual side, we are never willing to submit our intellect in this way. But all the knowledge we from grade 1 up to post-graduation was with the help of Shabd Praman. The teacher made a shape and said, this is A, all students say A. We submitted our intellect to the higher authority and we learnt. This is the easiest way of getting information. When we learned physics, we did not reinvent the wheel. We accepted the authority of the previous physicists and that is how we became masters in physics. How do you accept somebody as your father? Thirty years ago, there were no DNA tests. We merely accepted the authority of our mother. She said, my child, this is your father. And we said, all right, mother, on your testimony, I am accepting him. Similarly, the scriptures, the Vedas, are like the mother. They are a reliable and unblemished source of divine knowledge that is coming down since eternity. If you can accept their authority, they are telling us, look, this world is made by a creator, Janma Dyasyataha. Beyond creation is the creator. You accept their authority. This is Shabd Praman. So with the help of Pratyaksh Praman, Anuman Praman and Shabd Praman, we can deepen our faith and conviction in the existence of God. Further, when we follow the process of purification and we experience the bliss of God from inside and experience His existence through realization, that will then be the proof that we are looking for. <laughs>